So this is our workshop agenda, which are uh, introduction of what is personal branding, definition, which you have read, you have written down just now. Then uh, why is important in this internet of information, internet of value soon with blockchain? Why is even more important to brand yourself because of new media? So you equal new media. Okay, the th third part is finding out your why, which uh, just now I mentioned, personal branding is more of your self-awareness and how you internally look within yourself rather than just how people perceive you externally. After you find out why, there are three tactics to tell your story, to communicate your story. Uh, telling your story, the power of storytelling is in how authentic it is. So we will look into what it means by authenticity. Then we will brainstorm your story. You can you feel free to talk to the people around you and like you know brainstorm ideas together. And then we have a sharing session. Then we go for a 10-minute break. Dressing for success. Then after that, we have a framework, like just now what you mentioned, about uh, how do you look at personal branding in a systematic manner so that it's not like a case of subjective opinions or how I feel versus how you feel, how I say versus what, what you say, you know. And uh, then we'll see how David Beckham actually does it. He actually follows this like, or rather his PR people actually follow this systematic approach uh, to brand David Beckham and how he's portrayed on social media. And then we have a sharing session too. Then we have networking. So uh, what is your personal brand? In academia, right? Okay, because uh, I come from, uh, like my academic background is actually in branding and PR. So in academia, there are a total of 72 definitions of personal branding. So there are people who did their master's thesis and PhD on personal brand. So in these 72 academic definitions, how would you personally define personal branding? That is the first step because uh, we need to find out why and how people define it before we go on to any further discussions, right? So just previously mentioned, right? So it's actually two aspects to personal branding that you have to be aware of. The easier part is how people look at you from the external side. The more difficult part, uh, you know, is how, what do you really want to do in life? So the second part is philosophical already, which we will find some ways to make it simpler to decipher. So why this personal branding is important? It has economic value, definitely because uh, right now we are in the internet of information. What this means is that every time someone, before they meet you, they actually Google you. Yeah, so uh, before this session, right, actually I spoke to Elaine, the, the lady in red over there. So I, like, this is the today is the first time we met each other actually, but we are friends on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so this kind of thing happens uh, pretty often. Like before we actually meet a person, we kind of stalk the person on Facebook, on the Instagram, on the Snapchat, right? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, before certain interviews, even, if, even though it's not allowed, actually employers Google your HR department, Google you on uh, the internet, they Google you on LinkedIn. So, it, it might be wise to take, uh, to pay some attention to craft the image that you want people to uh, see uh, how they perceive you and the kind of uh, keywords they want to use when your name comes up. So barriers to entry for publishing is now extremely low. Uh, because blockchain in general, currently I'm doing blockchain PR. And in general, blockchain industry is a very drama driven industry. So every single week there's a drama, like new drama, someone fighting with someone else and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So even if you, if you have some enemies, in order, if you want to write something about them, you can do it very easily. Or if you want to write something favorable to yourself, you can do it very easily as well. As compared to like 20 years ago, where publishing is extremely difficult and expensive. So because, of, because now you have this opportunity to control your own brand and how you're perceived externally, so why not do personal branding? Yeah, so the third point is that people form a judgment of you even before they meet you in person, which is like, uh, it sounds very superficial, but unfortunately this is human nature, so we just accept it. So having, having accepted all these facts, right, how do you work on your online presence to contribute towards your personal brand, such that when people meet you in person, you, want, you, you are the best version of yourself, you present something that, um, it is a very effective way to actually polarize 
people in a sense such that you only want to work with people who want to work with you. I think that will be the real value of personal branding. Okay, next is to communicate your why. Uh, this is, you know, the golden circle is pretty popular. How many people heard of the golden circle before? Simon Sinek. Okay, very good. Okay, great. So, Simon, in, let me explain the golden circle. He says, whatever you do, right, always start from the inner circle. Like, why do you do what you do? Then move outwards. How do you do what you do? And what do you do? So when most people are pitching, like people who want to join the hackathon, when they pitch about their project, why they're doing the project, they will always start from the outside in, not the inside out. But a more compelling narrative will be to tell people why you're doing certain things. So communicating the why actually activate part of the limbic brain, which is responsible for decision making. So when you are pitching, of course, is to convince the judge to give you the top prize, right? And also a feeling such as trust, a sense of protection, loyalty. So when emotions are involved, in general, people don't really think very logically. It's like emotional, it, you, can, you can make that to your advantage or disadvantage. So the purpose of a story and a personal brand is to actually inspire all these. So people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. There are like a thousand and one similar projects or similar idea. Whatever you do, and really in whatever you, you do, in a job market, um, most people can be replaced really easily. So it might be wise to create a narrative, a story that tells people why you do what you do and why they should support you in what you do Effortless, effortlessly actually okay so <laughs> oh, this is a bit difficult for me because uh, finding out your why right in some of the clients I work with they have a lot of identity crisis and it's very hard because uh, initially most people come to us and they think that personal branding is more external based so they have this expectation that, oh, it's just about an image, I have to look a certain way, and I have to be a certain way, and change myself to a certain way, such that people will like me, people will uh, want to work with me. So this, this aspect is a bit more difficult to actually find out. It really takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort and willingness and honesty to look within yourself, to be able to brand yourself well. And I think this honesty is something that is a permission that only you can give yourself, basically. So number one, does it spark joy? Let's talk about Marie Kondo. If we were to think about her story, uh, anyone doesn't know, who doesn't know Marie Kondo? Raise your hand please, then I can explain. Okay, cool, cool, thank you, thank you. Okay, so Marie Kondo is this, uh, she makes a living as a cleaning expert. She is like world famous right now with a Netflix story and I watch every single episode. Yeah, yeah like, like, like I'm totally mind blown by it. So uh, Marie Kondo, 15 years ago, she actually did her bachelor thesis on how to clean up your house. Like that is so mind blowing, like if you do a bachelor thesis on something like that, which she says is a hobby 15 years ago. So how she got started in the industry is that she went to this Shinto temple. So she did meditation for like one year. And then one day she was like, oh, um, I'm very inspired that Whenever we want to uh, part with a piece of clothing that we don't want anymore, we should thank the clothing in a, in a ritual-like manner. Yeah, so, so if you think about it, right, this woman is damn weird. It's, she's very, very weird. Like, how, why would anyone have a, have a hobby uh, like cleaning? And why would anyone thank their clothes before they throw it away? Like, literally, she will um, have a certain way of folding the clothes, and she will thank the clothes, and she will throw them away, right? which is damn excellent personal branding actually. So uh, what happens is now she has a Netflix series, she has like three best-selling books. She is like known all over the world. And people, this is damn good personal branding because people associate Spark Joy, which she invented with her. So every time we say something like Spark Joy, immediately someone think of her. And this is something you want to achieve for yourself as well. Like uh, along the way, you can even think about 
what are some one or two words you want to use in your personal brand such that people associate it with you immediately for her it's spark joy what is yours so it's something to think about and of course uh, whenever we talk about sparking joy it has to be authentic so some, to some people this part is difficult because they don't even know what spark joy which is you know then then they really have to start uh, emotional journaling to find out more about themselves and looking inwards second part is uh, doing something what can you have to ask yourself what you can do naturally better than the rest of your peers which again uh, especially in Singapore cl Singaporean clients right this might be difficult because sometimes when someone says oh I'm very good at music uh, the parents might just say no you cannot there's no future in being a musician blah 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 so uh, natural talent sometimes when it doesn't fit the societal expectation they will get shot down so it is very important to have a self-awareness of what you can do naturally better than your peers uh, for me <laughs> for me this is uh, actually PR PR comes very very naturally to me so I guess but it took me very very long to realize that that's my personal story and also uh, I'm not very good at say uh, IT stuff like you can see just now so basically in business when you're doing your own uh, company it's very wise to have a team that complements what you're weak at but first step is you must find out what you're really naturally good at with effortlessly, effortlessly without uh, anybody else's interference the third part is uh, financially rewarding some people might disagree with this but this is what I personally think is true um, it's about having a passion and the passion must be financially rewarding for you to base your personal brand on it which later in the brand it like Beckham framework we will actually talk more about how do you link your personal brand and work on your personal brand such that it can have sustainable income for yourself uh, the fourth part is stepping stone of course not every point in our life we have to do things that we like so it's also worth it to consider uh, if, you're, if the current thing you're doing is a stepping stone to somewhere else like be clear that it's a stepping stone instead of the end goal last but not least is uh, knowing your core values um, not everyone can articulate that so it takes a lot of work as well but this session we aim to at least be aware that there's such a thing as core values and if you can articulate it by the end of this session I think it's a very good thing okay so uh, can we take five minutes to write down your why like why do you do what you do right now why do you work in a particular profession right now yeah take five minutes to write it down appreciate that thank you okay so uh it's very interesting in runways like narrative he actually links like his personal brand and what he wants to do to the national brand uh we see it actually quite a bit in european countries as well like some of our past clients we work with they do that a bit singaporeans not so much okay um then of course like in the description that you have written down on the piece of paper right based on that description let's ask the next question what's the story you tell yourself what this means is that uh, I would like to challenge you today to think about is there an alternative story that you can tell yourself the next question is why is it a story why is it not a fact why is it not objective truth yeah okay the the general explanation is many every one of us we tell ourselves a particular story so based on what you have written down just now on the piece of paper challenge yourself to think that is there a possibility that there can be an alternative story that you are telling yourself can there be such a thing you don't have to we don't have to share this lah, okay this one is just for your own reflection <laughs> okay then of course uh, after you have some sort of an idea what is going on internally the next part is to articulate your story articulating your story is important because uh, sometimes you know what you're doing but other people may not know it, it may not be well articulated this happens when we work in branding uh, especially for startups 
like if the founders are from like a tech background, they might be so passionate about their tech, but they cannot articulate the vision, the mission of the company to people, which is why like, uh, basically which is why companies hire me, because I help them articulate, right? So you just, on the left side, you can see uh, the hero's journey chart. This is by a book. This is from a book by this guy called Joseph Campbell. The book title is The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Okay, so in this book, there are a lot of examples of how stories are told over centuries. And this is the, this is the interesting part about human nature, right? Because uh, these stories actually stick. Even though time passes, even though so many generations pass, uh, cultures change, your fashion change, trends change, come and go. But this format of the story is consistent. So that is something very amazing to myself also. So what can we learn from the hero's journey chart is a good question. If you're interested, just get the book and read. If you don't read the book, just follow the uh, various stages of the hero's journey chart. Every single story that stays has at least three or more uh, stages in the hero's journey chart. Yeah. So today, uh, there are many ways to interpret this chart uh, basically. But today, we will focus on very easy, simple to remember takeaways that I will talk about now. So first is the underdog method, then us versus them method, and basically don't be perfect. Because people, in general, masses don't like perfect people, which some people might be very mind blown by. <laughs> okay, number one, JK Rowling. So remember, if there's one thing you want to take away today, right? remember that people love underdogs. Like nobody hates underdog. Uh, there's this recent this morning. I, I was like I woke up very late because I slept very late. Then I saw I saw the first thing I saw on my uh, Facebook right was this. I can't remember his name. Uh, American Got Talent. America Got Talent. There's this uh, gentleman. I'm not sure if anyone watched it. Sorry. Yeah, 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 that guy. So he's like an underdog. And why he got viral, right, is pop is because of this narrative. It's really this narrative that people like to see him as an underdog. Like, uh, imagine, uh, okay, that, that's just a heuristic. Okay, wait, let me continue with this one. Sorry for debating. So be before her first book was published, right, J.K. Rowling was a divorced mom on welfare who had been diagnosed with clinical depression. That is so difficult. You just, just take a moment and think about it. So in her life, she probably has to deal with her child, uh, the emotional drama that's going on between her and her husband. And officially, she is diagnosed with clinical depression. Under that kind of mental state, she still wrote like uh, Harry Potter, which is like international bestseller. And now she's like a multimillionaire. Yeah. So this is something to pay attention to. Second one is Jack Ma, okay? Not very good looking. Uh, especially in China where people judge you based on your looks, right? So he had to resist school entrance examination, twice for high school, four times for college. And when he tried to find jobs after graduation, he was repeatedly rejected. There was this famous story about him wanting to work in a fast food restaurant. And like out of 18 candidates, 17 got accepted. One person got rejected and it's him. <laughs> and, and guess what? He proudly says this in so many public speeches with the media. Do you say such things to the press? He does, right? His first startup failed and he, he really stresses that uh, being an entrepreneur is not easy. Uh, it's not all about like, you know, unicorns, successes, even though he owns a unicorn himself. So when Alibaba first started, it was Alibaba versus Amazon, which is like tech giant. So he's also framing himself as an underdog. So this uh, Nick actually is a very good friend of my, one of my good friends. So we have, we have a mutual friend. So he's international speaker. He's very inspiring. And he and people do see him as an underdog because like even though he is disabled, he is like international speaker, he just he knows his why very well and he knows what he wants to do in life very well and he's determined to live a happy life. So that is a method to inspire people as well. 
Okay, this, this method is a bit controversial, of course, because people might think that, oh, they are just like framing the story like that to get sympathy votes, blah, blah, blah. But actually, it's not. It is a system based on facts, facts that happen about your life, truth that happens in your life, and how you structure it such that um, you want people to see you in a manner that you can contribute to the particular society. All three of them know their talents very well. For J.K. Rowling, it's writing. For the gentleman uh, that when America Got Talent is singing and songwriting. For Jack Ma, entrepreneurship, teaching. For him, for Nick, is to inspire people to challenge their own boundaries. It's, uh, actually, I do find him very inspiring because like simple things like you know brushing your teeth every morning, we take for granted. And he does it. Okay, second method, us versus them. Okay, I, I don't get into politics, lah, okay, but uh, I, I, I personally think that this guy is, has such a great personal brand. Whether you agree or not with his values and other things. So I actually wrote two commentaries uh, about him and <laughs> it, got, it got translated into Japanese as well. So it's damn funny. So us versus them is a very interesting heuristic that you can use to easily get people on your side. But this one use with caution because you have to know your values very well. Like you have, a, you have to be aware of your values before you play this game. Huh? So uh, anything against Donald Trump is fake news. So he's the manufacturer of real news. You know? So uh, how you see this in branding perspective, because some people are here are interested in branding, right? Is that whenever you see a, let's say trainer, let's say I'm a trainer, which I'm not allowed okay, but if I have a trainer, I can say that, oh, uh, actually the other trainer, they're just out to get money, like Tony Robbins. They're just out to get money. You shouldn't be paying so much money for one class. You should just be giving for free. Yeah, if they use this kind of argument, it's actually the us versus them framing, which actually works really, really well because it polarizes people. What we want in branding is not lukewarm responses, but to polarize people. Because, and it's okay if people don't like you because people who don't like you will never be your paying customers anyway. So it's good to polarize and make people who like you uh, be your long-term customer. Okay, take a look at Donald Trump branding. And the third point is like, don't be perfect, show your vulnerabilities. Okay, in general, due to human nature, due to the nature of human nature, people do not like perfect things. People really don't like it. Like if you, if there is a person who is too perfect, right? The media, the, uh, the paparazzi will be all over them wanting to get a uh, hold of some parts of the imperfection. Like why the whole idea of paparazzi, of voyeurism, is because people want to see flaws in people's character. This is just human nature. So messes are messes in general. They are drama seeking, voyeuristic, and this is just the way it is for messes. I'm talking about messes, not talking about a uh, niche. If you are targeting a niche, uh, it's another story. And also, uh, the second reason why it's not good to be perfect, or why it is always wise to try as you adjust as you are, is because of financial reason. Because as long as you're imperfect, there is chance for growth, and that's where investment comes in. So when you're doing your pitching, which I'm not sure how many people are joining the hackathon. I hope you all join hackathon. <laughs> it is good to present a beta stage product so that if you can invite investors to invest. No investors will invest in a 10 upon 10 product. Most will get a 7.10. <coughs> yeah, so these are the two reasons to, um, to challenge the myth that personal branding is about perfection. It's not about perfection, it's actually about being transparent and your vulnerabilities. People find it easier to connect with you if you show your vulnerabilities. Okay, so let's take 10 minutes to write down what your story is. And uh, if you don't have a story right now, you can just take notes and then we'll do a sharing session later. Yeah. Um, dressing for success. In general, uh, dressing immediately, they can communicate the context and how important you regard a particular situation. So, basically we all need the awareness of how we can uh, dress for success, what the purpose of being in a particular, going to a particular place, a particular attire, 
it can be that in your notes as well because I want to I, I want to encourage more people to share in the next method because it will it's instantly applicable. Which is the Reddit like Beckham methodology. They wrote they wrote a whole book about it. Like, like a real whole book. The book is called Reddit by Beckham. If you're interested, go library and borrow. So I read the book in two hours, so I think most people carry in two hours, 30 minutes. But but the method I'm teaching you today right, is only one minute. The whole methodology is very easy to remember. So what is this methodology? The whole book, Branded by Beckham, is summarized into this methodology. When we talk about David Beckham, what is the thing that immediately comes to mind? Anyone want to shout out? Very good. Football. Anything else? Very good. Anything else? Okay, great. So, yeah. So, David Beckham has a really wonderful personal brand because his, the, his whole branding is very wholesome. Right. Okay, how to use this metrics, right, is that there's a top and a bottom. The top three are public, the bottom three are private. So, if let's say we want to brand a celebrity, a position, or by way, elections seem to be coming soon, so you can see how the politicians are using this to brand themselves for. Well. Uh, Let's go back to David Beckham. So first is the sponsorship and brand association. Like David Beckham, uh, he used to represent England, he has his own brand. So he is his own brand. He sells perfume that is like titled David Beckham. Uh, second part is professional expertise. Like immediately when we talk about David Beckham, we think of something. Third is fashion styling. So he is seen as even a fashion top leader and he appears on a lot of magazines that he part. And interestingly, uh, something about him that gives him a very wholesome personal brand is that uh, he is actually the spouse of another famous person. And you realize that this side of him is actually carefully curated on his social media. On your know, Instagram, you see a lot of Victoria Beckham. In front of press, they, they appear together. Like how many of uh, uh, celebrities actually show their spouses and specially curated photos available for press release of their spouses. Something you might want to think about. Because uh, the bottom three uh, quadrants, when you see it, right, because it is private, it's like something very personal, it might endear people even closer to your stuff. And of course, uh, David Beckham, they have a lot of children, and he's also, you know, they also appear in the press. Uh, like, the thing is he doesn't show in the parent, but it's okay. Uh, basically, in this framework, you just need to use one or two from the top, and one or two from the bottom. So, let's now uh, do a bit of exercise. On the last page of your handout, right, there is this quadrant, like this uh, six, I look at this, I think of the pizza we had just now. But okay, <laughs> this six slices. Can you fill it up? I encourage you to fill it up. And then later we do a sharing and I'll tell you how, how I can advise you on how to use it for your online personas. Yeah. So take 10 minutes to write out how you can make the personal branding consistent. Then we'll talk about it. 10 minutes.